could have provided no means of getting in contact with home. Found the Brits and their tanks. For a couple of packs of Canadian cigarettes, we asked, can you tap in and get the BBC Overseas program? Well, um, a bit awkward, Canada, but seeing it's you, and we got to hear Vera Lynn. I think there's something about her voice. The sincerity. She's like the girl next door, you know. The girl you left behind. One morning, they played a recording of the White Cliffs of Dover. And in those years that followed the war, each time I heard that song, it brought back memories. The woods at the crossroads between Dover and Deal, inland from the White Cliffs. Perhaps because it was the last days before we sailed to France, where I would then face the real tragedy of warfare. In the woods, we slept under the trees, got up early in the morning, and during that time, I would go on Saturdays to Dover, Deal, or Margate. I had a partner for darts at a small local pub, an older man, part of the home guard. I usually paid for the first pint of beer, seldom did I pay for any thereafter. Rumors haunted us. I remember being ordered to take a Bren gun and position myself at the edge of the woods where it opened up to the farmland adjacent. German paratroopers were to land. But after three or four hours, that rumor too proved false. I was part of an artillery battery, one of 16 young men. We crossed to France shortly after D-Day, just in time to be part of an assault against Caen. I would lose my friend, a young French Canadian, Gunner Charlie Royer, as bombs from Allied planes fell on us. I would bury him with the soil of France, carefully covering his face before I filled the gravesite with shovels of dirt. Our battery moved onward through France, beyond Calais, where the great German guns pounded the shores of Dover, <coughs> onward to Holland and Belgium, and then into Germany. I volunteered to be part of the Canadian Occupation Force and remained there until 46, escorting prisoners of war from place to place. I would return one last time to Dover in 1946. Bad weather between Calais and Dover caused us to miss the train to London, and I spent the night in the barracks at Dover Castle. And some 60 years later, the memories remain, those of a young man from Grand Brute, Newfoundland.